far as systems of equations goes, I never really liked when the teacher would say like use the addition method or use the substitution method. My attitude was like, I'll use whatever method I want, son. Right, like this, this thing, you don't have to tell me to use the substitution method because it's obvious that that would be the best way to do it. The addition method, and watch that video, the addition method uh, later if you don't know it, you know, you add down, stuff disappears. This thing is blatantly, obviously, y is alone already. And if you know what y is, then I should just be able to put that into that y. I mean, if y truly is negative three x plus five, which that's what they're telling me it is, then I should be able to blindly put that into that little y. Of course, I'll need some parentheses to do it, but I should be able to put it in there and then it will come out right, right? So again, use any method you want. And then, I don't know, if the teacher says you have to use a certain method, you can maybe work backwards, but usually, you know, it's pretty obvious. So this one, so let's do it. So if that's why, look, I'm gonna take this guy, 5x minus four, leave an empty space for my y equals negative three. I recommend you always do it this way. That way you don't mess up. Negative four, put an empty parentheses, and then later say, okay, y is this, negative three x plus five. And then it comes down to, you know, how good are you at algebra? Because now I'm basically done. This is gonna yield me an x. I'll put it back in to get my y. So I'm gonna distribute, I'm not gonna distribute a four, <coughs> I'm gonna distribute a negative four, right? So I get five x plus 12 x minus 20, right? Negative four. So that's what I get, positive 12 x, negative four times five is negative 20 equals negative three. So this looks like, you know, adding like terms, I get 17 x minus 20 equals negative three, skipping no steps. Now I get 17 x equals, add 20 to both sides, so, so I get, I shouldn't cross that out. I should be professional and erase that. Equals positive 17. It's a miracle. X equals one. Just for the record, pretty much on every one of these systems of equations problems, this is not a totally a rule, but you should get a whole number. I just have noticed that in my life. They almost always work out cleanly because no one wants to grade one that's like 17 over three. It's possible, so don't get mad at me if that happens, but usually it's a whole number. Now I'm not done. I found x, but I need to find y. And a cool debate is, does the one go into which equation? It should not matter at all. Now that you know x, it can go into either one. So I'm gonna put it into the top guy, it looks easier. So I get y equals negative three times plus five, right? I'm gonna put my one in there. y equals negative three plus five, so y equals two. And if you recall, this is actually a point. This is where two lines cross, and points are written in point form. So my final, final answer should be one comma two, x comma y, and that is my answer. So yes, it is the substitution method, and they probably would ask me to do the substitution method, but I would have done it anyways because it totally is set up as a perfect, beautiful, clean substitution. So when one variable is alone, when you start with one variable totally just isolated, that's like a huge shortcut. So that's how you do it, and it's pretty straightforward. And remember, if you're struggling in Algebra 2 at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, get the credits there, and have them transferred back to your high school.